So first of all, I'm going to show you the demo of the project. So here you can see that the nav bar. The nav bar contains the logo, sign in button, home, science, food, work life, that is menus, and here is the search bar. So here is the news listed. So I'm going to that is science prioritized news are listed here. Then I am going to click on movies. At that time, you can see that the news related to movies are prioritized. And I am going to click on food. At that time, you can see that the news related to food. And next, I am going to click on the work life. At that time, you can see that the prioritized news is based on work life. So here, next, I am going to click on home. At that time, you can see that all the news are listed. Then next, there is a search bar. So I am going to give the text. At the time, you can see that the news listed based on the search bar. So here I'm going to give us Apple. At the time, you can see that the whole news related to that search is like this way. Okay. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of the news. At that time, we will be redirected to the news details page. So in the news details page, we can see that we can add comments for that particular news. So I am going to type the comment and I am going to click on the add button. So at that time you can see that a warning is shown that is please log in. Okay. So next I am going to do is I am going to sign in into this account. So I am going to click on the sign in button here and we will be redirected to this sign in page. So from here I am going to click on the sign in button again and a pop up will be arrived and the user will be logged in and will be redirected to the home page again. So in the home page, you can see that sign in button is changed to logout button. So next I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the news as like this way and I'm going to type the comment and I'm going to click on the add button. So at that time you can see that a new comment is added and you can see the pop-up message that is comment added successfully. So here you can see the profile image the name of the user and the comment the user added. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to log in by using another account. So here I'm going to click on the sign in button. At that time you can see that a pop-up will be arrived and next I'm going to select the Google account as like this way. So at that time you can see that the user will be logged in and redirected to the home page. Here the sign in button is converted into logout button. The next I am going to click on one of the news. And I am going to add new comment. So here I am going to add from this user. So next I am going to click on the add button. So at that time you can see that the comment is added successfully. Okay. So next I am going to take the home page and here I am going to click on logout button at that time you can see that the user will be logged out. Okay. If this video is helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So I have created a new React.js project using create react app and then I have removed all the boilerplate codes and I have run the code. You can see the project here. So next I am going to take the BBC login page. Here I am going to click on BBC account. So at that time you can see that the original login page here is it. So we are going to create a similar page. So for that, first of all, I am going to do is I am going to take the tailwind.css with the create react app and I am going to click on this link first link. And here you can see that the steps that we have to do. So we have already created the project. So next I am going to run this code. So the tailwind will be installed. Okay. So next I am going to run this second code from here. So at that time you can see that a, a tailwind file has been added to this project so next you can see that in this file you can see the structure of the file as like this way so here we are going to do is i'm going to paste this string from here and to paste it in the content section 
that's like this way okay fine so next i'm going to do is after that i'm going to copy this and to paste it in the index.css file okay fine so next time i'm going to do is we have already run the project so next time i'm going to copy this section from here and to paste it here okay so as of now you can see that the changes is not there so i'm going to close the code editor and i'm going to run the project once more as like this way so now you can see that here is the changes that is there is underlined so from that we can understand that tailwind is working so here we have already given a class name that is underlined okay fine so as of now i am going to remove this class name so here you can see that uh, there is a picture in the right side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to import uh, that image so for that i'm going to create a new folder that is images and uh, i'm going to import that image so i have already created this image okay so i'm going to next uh, create a folder components and inside that folder i'm going to create uh, a new component that is sign in signin.js and here i am going to do is to import that image so before that i am going to call that component in this app.js sign in then next i am going to import that image in this sign in component that is import front from images slash front dot jpg okay so next i am going to use the image tag as like this way and inside this image tag i am going to use this host attribute and inside the source attribute i am going to give that image okay so now you can see that the structure of the page as like this way so we have to bring some changes so you can see that in the original page they have divided it into two part so i am going to divide our project or our sign in page into two part okay so for that i am going to do is to use the class name in this main div and here i am going to use the grid from the tailwind that is grid grid column 2 that means we are dividing the page into two part two column left column and right column okay so we have divided that div into two part two columns so next i am going to do is to use two div left div and right div so inside this right div i am going to paste this image as like this way so now you can see that the structure here so next i am going to bring some changes that is i am going to give a class that is background color black that is bg iphone black okay so now sign in component is black and next i am going to give a height so we can select a different height as like this way from here so i am going to select a height that is h screen h screen is equivalent to the height 100 vh that we can see when we hover there that is 100 vh of normal css okay so now you can see the structure of sign in component as like this way so next i am going to give a height to this image also so here i am going to give the class name that is the same class that is height screen that is h hyphen screen okay fine so the right section is completed so next i am going to do the left section so left section contains the different elements such as logo title and button etc so i am going to bring these elements or these components into this section so for that i am going to do is i am going to import a logo from my system or oh, i have already downloaded a logo of vbc so i am going to import that into this images folder and after that i am going to import that into this component so for that i am going to rename it as bbc logo.png okay so next i am going to import that logo into this component as like this way import logo from images slash logo.png 
okay so next i'm going to do is to use that logo in the image tag so here in the source attribute as like this way so now you can see that this structure of our sign in page is like this way so we have to produce the size of this logo so for that i'm going to give a class name here as like this way and here i'm going to give a height so we can select the height as like this way so here you can see that this is the height it is larger so i am going to reduce the height so now you can see that i think it is fine okay so next i am going to do is i am going to use the h1 tag inside this h1 tag i am going to give a sign in and here i am going to give a class name that is i am going to give text iphone white so other than we can give the color of that text text iphone white okay fine next we need to increase the size so for that i am going to give as text iphone we can select a different size that is large small extra small 2xl 3xl etc so i am going to select 3xl text iphone 3xl okay next i am going to give a font weight so i am going to select font semi bold okay so this is a structure i think it is fine so next i am going to give a button so for that i am going to search as tailwind css button okay so here i am going to click on this first link and here you can see that there is a lot of different buttons are there so from this i am going to select one of the buttons so i am going to select a basic button okay i am going to select this button completely so next i am going to paste that after this sign in as like this way so here you can see that there is a lot of the classes are given a few classes are given that is background color blue etc so here you can see that the structure of this button as like this way so next time i am going to change the color so we can uh, change the brightness and darkness or brightness of the color as like this way by giving the number so i am going to give as blue 600 okay so i think it is fine so next you can see that they have they have given different classes that is hover etc so actually there is uh, no need of hover we can change that before that i am going to give a height to that button height and width okay so here i am going to give a height as h iphone so now you can see that this is the height we don't want this much height so i am going to reduce the height has like this way so now you can see that the height of this button i think it is fine so next i am going to give the width so i am going to give a maximum width so i am going to give w hyphen okay so now you can see that this is the structure of button as of now okay fine so next we have to do is to bring that whole structure into the center so for that before that i am going to add a text that is sign in now so here i am going to give a class name that is i am going to give a color so for giving a color we have to give text iphone the color so i am going to give blue color and i am going to give a number for selecting the brightness or the variation of that particular color okay so i'm going to bring some changes here okay so now you can see that the structure is like this way i think it is fine so next i'm going to give a class name that is underline okay so next we have to bring that to the center so for that i am going to give a class in the div the left div 
So I am going to give X class name text sender. That's like this way. So now you can see that the sign in button and the text is centered. So next I am going to give a margin left to this logo for making it align with the other elements. I am going to increase the margin left as like this way. Okay, fine. So next I am going to give a margin top also. Okay. I am going to increase the margin top. Okay, so as of now it is fine. So next I am going to give a margin top to the each component that is the sign in. And for the button, I'm going to increase the margin top. Then I am giving a margin top for the sign in now text. Okay, so I think it is fine. Okay, fine. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, here you can see that this is a structure. So next I'm going to give a functionality for this button. So before that I'm going to do is to change the name of that button to sign in. Okay, so here I'm going to, you can see that here is sign in as the name of the button. So I'm going to give the sign in here as like this way. Sign in. So now you can see that the structure of the button is like this way. Okay, fine. So next I'm going to give the functionality for that button. So for that I'm going to use the Firebase authentication. So I'm going to select the or search for Firebase. And here I'm going to click on this first link. And next I'm going to do is to click on this get started. And after that I'm going to click on the add project button. So by clicking add project button, we can create a new project by giving the name of the project. So I'm going to give the name of the project as BBC clone. And next I am going to click on continue and I am going to disable this analytics section and I am going to click on create project. So now the new project has been created and I am going to click on continue again. So now you can see that we will be redirected to the console of the project. Here you can see there is three icons. So from that I am going to select web icon. So here as a first step we have to register the app. So for that I am going to give the name of the app as BBC clone itself. The next I am going to click on the register app. So now you can see that as a second step, we have to install the Firebase into our project. So as we are using the, as I am using npm, I am going to copy this command and to paste it in the new terminal and to run that command. Okay. So at that time you can see that the Firebase will be installed into our project. Okay. So now you can see that Firebase has been installed into our project. We can see that in the package.json so next next i am going to copy this complete code from there and i am going to create a new folder that is firebase and here i am going to create a new file that is setup.js and inside this setup.js file i am going to paste that code. so here i am going to remove these commands as like this way for make it more clear so here you can see that there is a firebase config which contains the api key or domain project id etc so we don't want to bring any changes to this firebase config so for that i am going to so so that i am going to minimize this firebase config okay so next you can see that they have imported or initialized this project by initialize app from firebase app okay so I am going to do this. We have to do the first thing that is we have to import a function from the Firebase auth. That's like this way. So before that, I am going to do is I am going to take the document and here I am going to click on this continue to console button. Then here in the console you can see that in the left side there is a build button. It contains authentication, database, etc. So I am going to click on authentication. Then next I am going to click on the get started button. So at that time you can see that this section here we need to add the provider. So for that I am going to click on this 
button add new provider so at that time you can see that here from this list we can select a provider so i am going to select the google and i am going to click on enable select the gmail id and i am going to click on the save button so now you can see that the google is enabled okay so next thing i am going to do is to import the function that is get the auth from firebase auth as a first function the next we have to import the google auth provider as a second function as like this way so we have imported the two function okay so next i am going to define a variable so i am going to give the name of the variable as auth then i am going to assign the get auth inside the or to that auth then next step that we have to do is to pass this app as an argument so usually when we are using this authentication or database in from the firebase we have to do this step that is we have to give app as an argument into that function that we have imported next i am going to export this variable for using it in other files then after that i am going to defining a variable for the google provider google auth provider function so i am given i have given it as google provider and i am going to assign it as new google provider and we have to pass that app inside this google auth provider as an argument so setup.js file is completed so i am going to take the sign in dot or sign in component here i am going to define a new function so i am going to give the name of the function as google sign in as an arrow, as an arrow function okay so next i am going to import a function from the firebase auth again so here the name of the function that we have to import from firebase auth is sign in with the pop up okay so i am going to use the sign in with the pop up function inside this google sign in function as like this way next i am going to give the async await and also try catch console dot error and i am going to pass this sign in with the pop up inside this try okay fine so next thing i am going to do is to give two argument into this sign in with the pop up function so the first argument is auth and second argument is google provider we have already defined that auth and google provider google provider in the setup.js file okay so from there we have to import that into this google into this sign in component okay so i am going to import that auth and google provider as like this way from firebase slash setup dot js file okay so we have imported and we have given as arguments the next time i'm going to call this google sign in function in the on click of the button sign in so next i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the sign in button at that time you can see that a pop up will be arrived from there we have to select the google account so i am going to select this google account so now you can see that the user is logged in so for checking that from here we can see the details of the user who is logged in that is mail id and other details so for checking that in our project we can we will get the details from this auth that we have imported so i am going to log that auth in the console so you can see that in the console as like this way the console contains the auth okay this auth contains a property called current user okay that current user contains the email id and also email is verified that is email verified is true okay so from that we can understand the user is logged in so next i am going to do is to create the navbar of our bbc clone so for that i am going to take the bbc news and from here i am going to click on the bbc home page so now you can see that here is the navbar so navbar contains logo sign in button menus search bar etc so for that first of all i am going to do is to create a new component that is navbar navbar.js 
then after that i'm going to do is here i'm going to give the navbar and i'm going to call this navbar in this app.js component so i have commented this sign in component and i'm calling navbar component here okay so now you can see that here is the navbar so next i'm going to do is here you can see that when we take this original navbar they have divided it into three parts the first part contains logo sign in button and second part contains the menus such as home sport travel etc and the third part contains the search bar okay so i'm going to divide this our navbar into three part so for that i'm going to do is to give a class name into this div the main div inside that class name i am going to use the grid from tailwind that is grid column 3 so that means we have divided we are dividing this navbar into three part three columns so each column i am going to give each div and i am going to use three div as like this way okay so next i am going to do is in the first div i am going to give the logo of the bbc news so here you can see that this is logo so i'm going to import that logo to this component also we have already imported in this images folder okay images slash logo.png so i'm going to use that in the image tag so inside this image tag i'm going to use the source attribute and inside the source attribute i'm going to use the logo as like this way so now you can see that the logo here so in the original navbar you can see that background color is black so i'm going to change the background color of this navbar navbar of our clone so for that i'm going to do is to give the class name in this main div that is background bg iphone blank so at that time you can see that the background color has changed to black the next time i'm going to reduce the size of this logo so for that i'm going to give a class name in this image tag here as like this way and here i am going to give the height as 10 okay so we can give height as like this way so now you can see that it is as like similar to the structure of the original navbar okay fine so next time i'm going to do is to implement this sign in button okay so for that i'm going to do is i'm going to import an image from this images folder so this is the image that i'm going to use for the sign in icon so i'm going to import that image into this navbar component as like this way so now you can see that i am going to use that image in this button as like this way inside this image tag i'm going to use that user image so now you can see that the structure as like this way so now i'm going to give a class name for this image tag to reduce the size of that image so here i'm going to give the height that is i'm going to give a height for about 10. okay so this is the structure as of now so i am going to give here the flex in this button so at that time you can see that how it looks okay so next i am going to give a hover effect so here in this button i am going to give the hover hyphen colon border so i am going to give here the color blue here i am going to give a border first then i am going to give border hyphen blue okay so this is a structure next i am going to give a padding for this button so i am going to give padding 2 so now you can see that the structure of the sign in component is like this way or sign in button as like this way so here i am going to give a border right
or I am going to give as hover border white. Simply white as like this. So now you can see that this is a structure as of now. Okay, fine. So next you can see that I am going to increase the width of this button signing. Okay, so for that I am going to do is I am going to give here the width in this class name of the button as like this way. So now you can see that the width has been increased. Okay, fine. So next I am going to give a padding commonly. So in the left div for the main div, I am going to give a padding for about the two. So at that time you can see that the structure as like this. Okay, so fine. It is similar. So next you can see that as a second part, you can see the menus, home, port, etc. So I am going to give the menus. So for that I am going to use the button in the second div as like this way. So I am going to give a 8 button for 8 menus. Okay. So first here I am going to give as home. Then you can see that the home, sport, real. So here I am going to give as real. Then next you can see work life, travel, future, culture, etc. So I am going to give work life, travel, future. culture okay fine so after that i'm going to give a color commonly for the main div that is text white so at that time you can see the menus is listed here as like this way okay fine so next i'm going to do is to give a flex here so in the second div I am going to give I have given a class name and I have given the style flex. So this is a structure. So next I am going to give class name for the button. So I am going to give the class name that is margin left. So I am going to give the same class name for the each button or for all buttons as like this way. So now you can see that. This is a structure of our menu section or the middle section of the nav bar. Okay. So I'm going to increase the margin left to 4 for all the buttons. Okay. So next I'm going to give a style. That is I'm going to give a font weight. So here I'm going to give font weight. That is font iPhone semi bold. And next I'm going to do here you can see that this is a structure of our now, but then next I am going to reduce the size of the easy button. So I am going to give as text small. So this is a structure. So I am going to give the style to all of the button. So I am going to copy this style and paste it to all the buttons. That's like this way. So now you can see the structure. Okay, fine. So next I am going to do is I am going to increase the margin left to 7. So I think it is better. So I am going to give all margin left to 7 for the buttons. Okay, fine. Okay. Then I am going to remove this margin left of the first button that is home button, home menu. Okay, fine. So next you can see that here is a search bar at the third div. So when I click the search bar, you can see that we will be redirected to a page. So I am going to do is to use a button element for that search bar. So here I am going to give a search BBC. And next I am going to do is I am going to give a class name for this third div as flex so this is a structure and here i'm going to give a class name for the button that is margin left 
Okay, fine. The next thing I'm going to do is to import an image into this. So for that, I'm going to use the image tag as like this way. And inside this image tag, I'm going to use the source attribute. And next time I'm going to import the image of lens. So this is the image that I'm going to import. So I'm importing into the images folder. Next time I'm going to import that into the before that I'm going to rename it as lens and I'm going to import it into the navbar component as like this way. Import the lens from images slash lens dot png. So next time I'm going to use that in the source attribute as like this way. So here is a structure. So I'm going to give some style. So I'm going to give the class name in this image tag. Then after that I'm going to give a style to this button that is flex. Okay. So next I'm going to give the style. So I am going to give the padding. Okay, fine. Then I am going to reduce the size of this lens image. Okay. So next I am going to do is to install the react or auto dog into our project okay so for that i'm going to take the new terminal and here i am going to run the command npm install react router dom so now react router dom will be installed into our project so react router dom has been installed into our project we can see that in the package.json okay here is it so Next I am going to do is, I am going to create a new component called main.js and inside this component I am going to call the navbar component. Then next I am going to do is, I am going to remove this navbar from the app component and I am going to the index.js component and here I am going to import the browser router from react router dom. We have to wrap the app component using this browser router first. Okay. So I am going to put this app component inside this browser router as like this way. So next I am going to do is in this app component I am going to import the routes and inside that routes i'm going to use the route component so here i'm going to use two route component that's like this way and i'm giving here the path that is slash sign in for sign in component and inside the element i'm going to give the component that is sign in as like this way the next in the second router i'm going to give the path as just slash for the main component so inside the element i am going to give the main component so now you can see the structure as like this way so next i am going to give a link for the sign in button so for that in the navbar i am going to use the link component from the react router dom so i am going to wrap that button within this link component so i am going to paste this button here as like this way then inside this link component i am going to give the root that is slash sign in so now you can see that when we when i click this sign in button in the navbar we will be redirected to this sign in page okay so next i am going to do is to give the logout button or logout functionality so for that first of all i am going to give a condition here that is i am going to use the or i am going to give the condition that is auth dot current user 
we have that auth contains the property called current user so if auth dot current user is present then we i am going to show a button that is logout button as like this way so this is a logout button otherwise we have to show the sign in button okay so here i am going to give as logout Or I am going to copy this button from here and to paste it here, and I am going to change this name of this button into logout. And after that, I am going to remove this image from here. Okay. So as of now, you can see that when we click the sign in button, we will be redirected to this sign in page. So next, thing I am going to do is I am going to navigate to this main component or main page when we click the sign in button and log in. So for that, I am going to take the sign in component, and here after this sign in with the pop-up function i'm going to use the navigate so for that i'm going to define the navigate and i'm going to assign the use navigate from react router dom as like this way the next i'm going to use this navigate here and i'm going to give the root for main component so here i am going to give that the condition auth dot current user and and navigate that means if auth dot current user is available then only we have to navigate to the main component so i am going to log in by clicking sign in then you can see that here is logout button so next thing i am going to do is i am going to reduce the width of this logout button so in the navbar component i am going to remove this width from here okay so this is a structure so next thing i am going to give the functionality for this logout button so here i am going to define a function called a logout as like this way which is an arrow function and i'm going to import a function from the firebase auth so the function that i'm going to import is sign out from firebase auth the next i'm going to use this sign out function inside this logout as like this way and here i'm going to give the async await and try gets okay so here i am going to give as console dot error and i am going to pass this await sign out inside this try okay next time i am going to do is to call this logout function in the on click of this logout button and next i am going to pass auth as an argument into this sign out function okay so next i am going to click on this logout button so next i am going to do is i am going to log the auth dot current user in the console so at that time you can see that I am logged auth. So inside this auth, you can see that there is a current user property, but current user property is null as of now as we have logged out. Okay, so here you can see that that is sign in button. So I am going to click on the sign in button again and I am going to logging in as like this way and we will be redirected to this main component. So here you can see that logout button. So I am going to click on logout, but as of now, you can see that logout button is not changing to sign in until we have refreshed so for that i am going to do is i am going to use the navigate again here so for that i am going to define the variable that is navigate and i am going to use the use navigate from react router dom then i am going to use this navigate inside this after the sign out function and here i am going to give main or a slash as navigate again so at that time you can see that can i am going to sign in again then i am going to click on this logout button then it will be converted into sign in so next i am going to do is to take the news api website so i am going to click on this first link then we will be redirected to the news api home page so first of all we have to take the account or register so i have already taken an account in this news api so here next i am going to click on this button in the navbar you can see that here so next we will be redirected to this account details section so from here you can see that 
there is an API key. So we need this API key to use that in the end of the URL. Okay. So next I'm going to click on the back to home button. Then we will be redirected to home page again. So from here, I am going to click on the get to starter in the nav bar. Then we will be redirected to this section. So here you can see that we have to select the language. So I am going to select the JavaScript as the language. And when we scroll down, you can see the URL that we need to use. Okay. So I am going to copy this URL from here. Then next I am going to do is to create a new component. So I am going to give the name of the component as home. Home.js. Okay. So I am going to call this component next in the main component below the nav bar. As like this way. So you can see that in the original BBC home page. So I am going to take the original BBC home page. Here there is a nav bar home home section and you can see that this page is divided into two that is navbar and home section so i am going to divide our main component into two so for that i am going to use the grid from tailwind so here i am going to write as grid grid iphone row two that means we are dividing into two rows okay let's write this way so we have divided the navbar and the home page or home component so here you can see the navbar and home as like this way so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to define a function in the home component that is a get the news function i have given the name of the function as get the news an arrow function so then i'm going to use the fetch okay for the url so i'm going to paste the url here and you can see that in the end of the URL, we have to give the API key. So for that, I am going to copy the API key from here. After clicking, clicking this button, we will get the API key. So I am going to copy that API key and to paste at the end of this URL. Okay. Then I am going to remove this section also. That is from that is a date section. Okay. Okay. So then next I am going to do is I am going to take the response. So then the response, I'm going to convert it into JSON format. That is J response.json. Then next I'm going to use the JSON formatted response. And I'm going to log that in the console. As JSON. Okay. So next I'm going to call this function that is get the news in the use effect. Use effect hook as like this way. So now you can see that I'm going to call the get news here. So now I am going to take the console. So in the console, you can see that there is an object. The object contains the articles. That is the result. That means it contains hundreds of articles and hundreds of news. So in each news, you can see that the details such as the name of the author. Content description, published date is there, title is there, then URL, URL image is also there. Okay. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to pass these details into an array. Okay, so for that I'm going to define a state. So I am going to give the name of the state as news, news set news, and I'm going to pass the empty array into it has initial state okay then next i'm going to pass this json into this state and i'm going to map through the state as news dot map as like this way then next i'm going to do is i'm going to use the tailwind css card Within, within this return. So I am going to search for Tailwind CSS card as like this way. So now you can see that here is the structure of cards. 
So I'm going to select this card. So I'm going to copy this card from here and to paste in within this map. Okay, it's like this way. So now, so next I'm going to do is to pass this news state into this array as a dependency in this use effect. That's like this way. Then after that, I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this JSON dot articles into set news. Then after that, in the navbar main div, I'm going to pass the position fixed. Okay. So here now you can see that this is a structure. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to give some style to this main div of the home component that is class name margin top as like this way then next i am going to give the margin left then i am going to give the grid also so i am going to give as grid column four that means i am going to divide into four columns okay as like this way so this is a structure as of now so next i'm going to bring some changes that is i'm going to remove this margin left and i'm going to give the padding here then this is a structure now so i'm going to reduce the margin top as like this way So next I am going to give the content of this news. So in the console you can see that here is the array which contains the each news. It has you know it has a content. So I am going to give the content in this detail section that is data dot content. Okay so now you can see that here is the content for each news. Then next I am going to give the title of the news so here is title so i am going to give the data dot title here so at the time you can see that the title is also changed for each news here you can see that title okay so next i am going to remove this bottom sec bottom section of this each card so i am going to remove this div from here so now you can see the structure as like this way the bottom section has been removed so next you can see that in each article or in each news there is url to image so i am going to give this url to image in the image tag so i am going to remove this source string as like this way and i am going to give the data dot url to image so here you can see that it is showing the image so you can see that it is showing the image of Apple products or Apple newses, newses related to Apple. So I am going to do is I am going to remove this Apple Q equal to Apple and to convert it into Q equal to all. So at that time you can see that now I am refreshing. So now you can see that all news is showing here. So next I am going to do is to take the main component. And inside this main component, I'm going to define a state that is menu, menu, set menu equal to use state, an empty string. The next I'm going to pass this set to menu into this navbar component as the prop, as like this way. Next I'm going to take the navbar and here I'm going to take it as props. Then after that I'm going to do is, I'm going to give on click in each of the buttons for menu and i'm going to give as props dot set to menu and i'm going to pass the name of the button or name of the menu into it as like this way so here i'm going to give as all for the menu home okay the next i'm going to copy and paste this on click and here i am going to pass as science then here I'm going to change the name of this button. Then like that, I'm going to give the on click in each of this button. And here I'm going to give us movies into the state. And also I'm going to change the name of the 
button and here I am going to give we have already given as travel and here I am going to change it and I am going to give as work life then next I am going to paste this on click in the future and this culture button okay then next I am going to do is next I am going to take the main component again so now you can see that this is a structure here is science movies work life etc so next I am going to take the main component and I am going to pass the menu state into this home component as like this way as a prop the next I am going to the home component and inside this home component I am going to use it as props by taking like this way and next I am going to do is I am going to remove this console from here so here what I am going to do is I am going to use back tick here and next I am going to remove this all q equal to all and here I am going to give as props dot menu so if the if the props dot menu is available then we have to give the props dot menu there otherwise I am going to give as all as the default so now you can see that here it is showing all the news so next I am going to I have clicked the science menu so at that time you can see that the news here I am going I have clicked the movies at that time you can see that movies is prioritized within the list okay next when I click the travel menu you can see that the travel based contents or news are prioritized in the list okay it's like this way so here when we click this home we can see that all the news will be shown and I, when we click the science you can see that there is science news and uh, when we click this reel so you can see that here is food we have added so I am going to change this name of the button into food in the navbar component I am going to give here as food okay so now you can see the structure as like this way here is work life so when I click the work life you can see that here is showing the news okay fine so next I am going to do the search bar or functionality for search bar so for that I am going to take the nav bar and here you can see that this is a div for search bar and here I am going to change this button into an input okay so I am going to remove this button here and I am going to give as input field as like this way I am going to remove this section also and next I am going to give this image before this input okay so next I am going to do is I am going to give a placeholder that is search BBC and I am going to give the class name or child in the class name that is BG iPhone black that is I, am, I have changed the background color to black and I have removed that and you can see that this is a structure of now then I am going to reduce this margin left to, to 40 so this is a structure okay so I think the design is very fine. So next I am going to do is I am going to I have taken the main component here I am going to define a new state that is search. Okay so here I am giving as initial empty string then I am going to pass the search, set the search into the navbar again or I am going to pass a props again into this navbar component as like this way. So we have already taken the props in this navbar component so I am going to do is I am going to give an on change in the input field here and inside this input field I am going to use the props dot set to search and here I am going to pass the e dot target dot value into this set to search props dot set to search as like this way okay so here I am going to take the e event the next I am going to do is in the main component I am going to pass the search as a props into the home component as like this way and then next I am going to take the home component and here also we have already taken the props and next I am going to do is I am going to give a filter method and here I am going to take the data and I am going to do is data.title we have already used data.title 
okay so i am going to filter the based on the title okay so here i am going to use the includes javascript method and here inside this includes i am going to pass the props.search okay so now the search will happen based on the search that we have or the title that we are giving here so here i am going to give as so now you can see that when i typed this a and d you can see that here is showing so then i, I have given appl you can see that here is showing the news with the, the given search keywords or letters okay so here you can see that i am clicking this travel then you can see that uh, so here i am going to give that this name so as like this way you can see that okay fine so search is working fine so next i am going to take the firebase i am going to click on this first link so next i am going to click on this get started we have already created a clone project of bbc so i am going to click on this and we will be redirected to the console of our project so here you can see that this is a console of our project bbc clone and in the sidebar you can see that we have already selected the authentication we have already enabled authentication then next i am going to click on build again at that time you can see that below authentication there are another options so from these options i am going to select this firestore database so i am going to click on firestore database then next i am going to click on the create database button after that i am going to select one of the option that is start in production mode then next i am going to click on this next button and i am going to select the a location so i am going to select mumbai as the location and i am going to click on enable so now you can see that our database has been created this is our database so next you can see that the main important thing so here there is a rules option so when i click this rules option you can see that here it is showing allow read write if false so i am going to convert that into true and i am going to click on the publish button so at that time you can see that the changes has been published okay so next i am going to take the data section again so into this data section i am going to add the details of the news okay so before that what i am going to do is you can see that this is the card section so whenever we click this card section we need to be redirected to the news details page okay so next i am going to do is i am going to create a new component that is i am going to give news details dot js as the name of the component here i am going to give as news details next i am going to do is i am going to wrap this card component card section by using link component from react router dom as like this way then next i am going to use the two props and to give the root that is two slash details so next i am going to do is i am going to give this root in the app component so i am going to take the app component and here i am going to use the root component and inside this root component i am going to give the path that is slash details and i am going to give the element that is news details okay so now you can see that when we click any of the news we will be redirected to news details page so next thing i am going to do is i am going to take the home component and here i am going to pass the data so this is the way of passing data in the link component we have already taken the data by mapping and i am going to pass that data as data 
colon data. So now we can take that details in the news details component. So I am going to use the use location hook from React Router DOM. So I'm, first of all, I am going to define a variable called a location and I am going to assign the use location hook into that. Okay. So now I am going to log that in the console. So here I am going to take the console and I am going to click on one of the news. So at that time you can see that we will be redirected and here is the data. Okay. The location which we have logged. Okay. So now you can see that in that contains date dot data which contains the details of that news that is the news title, content, description etc. So I am going to next divide this portion into two parts left to right for details and comments. So for that I am going to remove this console first and next I am going to remove this news details and here I am going to divide this so inside this class name, I am going to give as grid, grid, column 2. Okay. So as two part, I am going to use a two div. In the first div, I am going to use the, or I am going to show the title first. So h1 tag. Inside the h1 tag, I am going to give as location dot state dot data dot title and after that I am going to use the h4 tag so inside this h4 tag I am going to give location dot state dot data dot description so now you can see that this structure as like this way here is title and description so next I am going to give a class name for this title that is in this class name, I am going to give as a font extra bold and text to Excel. Okay, so now you can see that the structure is like this way. Fine. The next I am going to use the image tag after this description. So here I am going to give location dot state dot data dot URL to image. Okay, so now you can see that here is the image also. So next I am going to give the command section. So for that, before that I am going to give padding 5 class name. Okay. Next I am going to define a new or I am going to create a new component. So I am going to give the name of the component as comments. Okay comments.js and here you can see that I am going to give as comments and I am going to call this comments component in the news details component as like this way in the second part so now you can see that here is comments okay so next I am going to divide this into two rows Okay, for adding comment and showing comment. So for that, here I am going to give class name and grid, grid row 2. Okay. So we have divided into two parts. So next I am going to remove this and to give div. So before that, I am going to use the input field from tailwind. So I am going to click on this link and here you can see that there are different design of input field. So I am going to select this basic design. So I am going to copy this first section and I am going to paste it here. Here I am going to give the end portion or end of the tag. Okay. So now you can see that here is the input field. Next I am going to do is, I am going to reduce it, the, reduces the width. So here they have already given a width full. So I am going to give width that is 2 by 3. So this is a structure 
you can see that as of now then next i am going to do is i am going to give class name padding 5 here also okay then i am going to change the placeholder a label so here i am going to give that add comments in the label and i am going to give placeholder as comments here So next I am going to do is to add the particular news into the database when we click the news. Okay. So for that I am going to take the home component and here I am going to define a new function that is add news, an arrow function. So next thing that I am going to do is I am going to take the setup.js file and I am going to import a function from Firebase. Firestore. So the function that I am importing is get Firestore from Firebase Firestore. After that, I am going to define a variable. So I am going to give the name of the variable as database and I am going to assign this get to Firestore into this database and I am going to give this app as an argument into this get to Firestore. Next, I am going to export this file. For using it in other files. Okay, so next I am going to take the home component again, and here I am going to use the set doc function from Firebase. So we have to import that set doc function from the Firebase Firestore. From Firebase Firestore. Okay, so next I am going to give the async await. Await set doc. After that, I'm going to give the try catch catch and I'm going to give console dot error. Then I'm going to pass this set to doc inside this try. So actually, I'm going to do is to create a new collection for adding the details of the news so when we click this news we have to add the collection so for that i am going to define a new variable so i am going to give the name of the variable as news doc and i am going to use the doc function from firebase and as a first argument i am going to pass the database that we have already defined in the firebase setup.js file in our project so I am going to import that database from firebase slash setup.js file. So next as a second argument I am going to pass the name of the collection. So I am going to give the name of the collection as news. So as a third argument we have to pass a particular ID. So first of all I am going to log the news state here. So now you can see that I am going to take the console. And in the console, you can find that here is each news, and each news contains a detail such as title, content, description, etc. But there is no particular ID. You can see an ID here, which is a null. So you can see that there is no particular ID. So I am going to use this end portion of the URL as the ID. Okay. So for that, what I am going to do is I'm first I'm going to remove this console and I'm going to call this add news in the on click of this link and I'm going to use this data from here as an argument. So I'm going to pass that data as an argument here and we can take that as a parameter to this function data itself and next I'm going to use that as a third argument. So here in the back tick I'm going to give as data dot URL. So I'm going to use the last portion of that URL. So I'm going to give substring method and I'm going to give minus 10 comma 10. Okay. So next I'm going to do is to give this news doc into set doc and this title and the description. 
so we will get the title that is data dot title and a description data dot description as like this way so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this one of the news at that time a new collection will be created with the title and description in this database so i'm going to click one of the news here so we will be redirected to this news detail section so here you can see that i am going to take the database i am going to refresh the database at the time you can see that a new collection is created in the name news that we have already given there the name of the collection here as a second argument and here you can see the id of the document that we have given as the third argument okay so next you can see that there is field such as description as well as title okay so we have added a new collection and a document next i am going to give a button here in the comments component after input field so for that i am going to take a tailwind css button so i am going to search for tailwind css button and here I am going to click on this first link and we will be redirected to this section. So here I am going to use the basic first button that's showing here. So I am going to copy this code and to paste after input field. I am giving here add. Okay, so now you can see the structure as like this way. Then next I am going to do is to wrap this input field and button by using a div. And I am going to give a class name for the div that is flex. So now you can see that the structure of the input field and the button is like this way. So next I am going to give a style for the button that is margin left to 2. Okay, then I am going to bring some changes to the button in the style. So I am going to change this hover. To select the color. Next, I am going to change the background color. So here you can see that this is the background color. I am going to copy the background color from the input field itself, and I am going to paste it in the button. Okay. So now you can see that this is the background color of the button as of now. So I am going to give the color for the text of the button. So I am going to copy this text color from this input field and I am going to paste it here. So now it is changed as like this way. So next I am going to do is I am going to give as text small. And I am going to remove this font bold. So now you can see that this is a structure. Okay fine. So, next I am going to copy this border style completely and to paste it here. Okay, fine. So, next I am going to change the color of the text slightly. Then, next I am going to add a comment to the database. So, for that, I am going to define a new function in the comments component. So, here I am going to define a new function called add comments. Which is an arrow function and i'm going to use the add doc function from the firebase as like this when i'm going to give the async await and try catch so next i'm going to do is to give console dot error and i'm going to pass this add doc into this try as like this way so next i'm going to do is i'm going to define a new variable that is news collection so here what i'm going to do is to create a new sub collection here with the name comments okay so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to define a new variable that is news doc and i'm going to use the 
dog function from the firebase so first i have given database as the argument and second i have given the name of the collection that we have already created the next we need the id so i am going to take this id from the news details as the props so i am going to pass it as url that is location dot state dot data dot url okay so next i am going to take it as props in the comments component as like this way and i am going to use that props here so in the back tick i am going to use the props dot url dot substring minus 10 comma 10 okay so now we have got the id of that particular news the next i am going to define the comments rough which is equal to i am going to use the collection component collection function from the firebase and inside this collection i am going to pass this news doc as the first argument and the name of the new sub collection as the second argument that is comments so now you can see that i am going to pass this comments rough as an argument into this add doc and as a second argument we have to pass the comments so i am going to define a new state that is comments set comments and i am going to pass the empty string then next i am going to use the set to comments in the on change of the input field and i am going to pass e dot target dot value by taking the event okay so next i am going to do is i am going to call the function that is add comments in the button on click of the button add and after that i am going to use the comments here okay so now i am going to add a comment as like this way and i am going to click on the add button so at that time you can see that when i refresh the page a new sub collection has been created with the name comments and it contains the documents with the fields comment okay so we have added the comment into our database it is fine so next i am going to change the hover color background color so here i am going to reduce this as like this way okay fine so we have added the comment okay next i am going to list the comments so for that i am going to define a new function that is show comments which is an arrow function i am going to use the get docs function from the firebase so next i am going to give the async await then try catch console dot error then i am going to paste this get docs inside this try okay so next i am going to do is i am going to define a new variable here news doc what i am going to do is to copy and paste these two variables from here and to paste it here you can see that the next i am going to copy this comment rough and to paste it as an argument to this get docs next i am going to call this function inside the use effect hook as like this way okay fine so after that i am going to do is to assign this into a variable data and i am going to log that data in the console so now you can see that i am going to take the console here you can see the query snapshot which contains the docs but that is not in the form we can use it directly so i am going to define a new variable that is filter data and i am going to map through this data dot docs and i am going to call the data function on each doc i am going to take each document as doc and i am going to call this data function and next i am going to pass the id also
then after that i am going to do is i am going to define a new variable a new state that is news data set to news data an empty array so next i am going to use the set to news data here and i am going to pass the filter data into it next i am going to do is i am going to map through the news data here news data dot map I am going to take each as data and here I am going to give as before that I am going to change this news data into news comments set to news comments and I am going to change this in the show comments function I am copy and paste this set to news comments here and also I am going to change this news data into news comments then after that i am going to give as data dot comments data dot comments okay fine so next you can see that here is the comment that we have already given so next i am going to do is to pass this news comments state into the dependency array as like this way so now you can see that i am going to add a new comment or i am going to add one more comment so here i am going to do is to give the tag as like this way it's three tag so now you can see that or i am going to give h4 tag that is data dot comments so now you can see that the structure as like this way here is the, it is listed as like this way the comments are listed so next i am going to give a class name for this div that is padding okay so now you can see that the structure as like this way okay fine so next i am going to do is i am going to show the name and the profile image so for that i am going to use the image tag as like this way so we have already passed the comments in the add comments function so along with that i am going to pass the name that is the auth contains the property called current user which contains the display name and i am going to pass the profile image as profile image that means auth itself contains an app another property inside the current user that is auth.current user contains photo url so i am going to pass that photo url also so now i am going to remove this collection from here and next i am going to comment again or add comment so before that i am going to sign in so i am going to click on the sign in button at that time we will be signed in and the next time i am going to add a comment so at that time you can see that here is the comment so next time i am going to do is to give the source attribute and inside the source attribute i am going to pass the data dot profile image so now you can see that here is the profile image okay so next i am going to give the style such as class name rounded full so at that time you can see that this structure is like this way so next time i am going to reduce the size so i am going to give the width and the height also So this is a structure of our profile image. So next I'm going to do is to give the div here. So inside this div, I'm going to put this 
image and then it's for tag and here i am going to give the class name that is plus so this is a structure next i am going to give a class name for this h4 tag that is margin left okay so next i am going to do is to comment again so at that time you can see that the new comments will be there okay as like this way one after the other okay so next time i'm going to do is to give the or show the name of the user so for that i am going to use ch3 tag and here i am going to give as data dot name so next time i'm going to put this h4 tag out of that div and here i am going to give the class name that is margin left as like this way so now you can see the structure as like this way here is for profile image name and the comments so next i am going to do is i am going to give here the margin left for this comments okay fine so i am going to give some style such as i am going to change it as h6 tag and i am going to give the text small and i am going to give the color for the text that is slight as like this way or i am going to change it into uppercase okay so next here i am going to do is to give the hs6 tag okay fine so next time going to do is i am going to add more and more comments so i am going to do is to copy this description and to paste it here as comments and i am going to click on add button so now you can see that it is as like this way add again at that time you can see that the gap is increasing so i am going to give a class name to this div and here i am going to give as height as like this way so now you can see that the gap has gone now it is fine so next time i am going to give a padding also along with the height so this is the structure as of now so next time i am going to give a style that is font semi bold okay fine so this is a whole structure so next time i am going to do is to give a condition here that is in the add comments i am going to give as condition auth dot current user and and add dog function so whenever the user is logged in then only we can add the comments so here i am going to add a comment at that time you can see that the comment is not adding to the database or it is not showing here so next i am going to use the react toxify for showing the warning to login so i am going to click on this first link npm and i am going to copy that is npm i react toxify then next i am going to run this command in the new terminal so now the react toxify will be installed into our project so now you can see that the react toxify has been installed into our project we can see that in the package.json as like this way so next i am going to do is in the documentation you can see that here is an example so i am going to copy this section from here and to paste it in our component as like this way so next i am going to do is in the example you can see that i am going to use this toxic container as like this way itself so i am going to paste it here in the bottom section of the component and next i am going to use the toast in the add comments so here i am going to give the condition that is auth dot current user and and the toast 
please log in. Okay, so now you can see that I am going to change it to equal to equal to null. So now you can see that when I click the add button, it is showing the please login. So here you can see that in the documentation, they are showing the demo. So from there we can see that they are given a lot of props. So from here I am going to select or copy this prop that is auto close. So I am going to paste it in the toxic container component as like this way. And next, I am going to give the toast dot warning. So at that time, you can see that it has changed the style of the warning or the style of the toast has been changed. I am going to click on add button. So you can see that it is showing please login. So next, I am going to do is to reduce this auto close. Okay, fine. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to give this toast for the comments, adding comments. So after this add dog function, I'm going to use the toast.success and I'm going to give as comments added successfully. And I'm going to give here the auth.current user condition here also. Okay. I am going to add the comments. So before that, I am going to log in. So I am going to click on sign in button. Then the user will be logged in. And you can see that I am going to add a comment to this news. As like this way. At the time, you can see that it is showing the success message comments added successfully. So we have done our project. Okay. If this video is helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel.